charge of Sunday school. Let's go! Bless us as we are apart from each other. Amen. started with some jumping jacks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great job keeping up, but I'm that kind of athlete. I love sports, not just watching sports, but actually just taking part in it. And I love the thrill of winning. Don't you just love track and field events? I don't get very excited about losing, but I try to use those odd times and opportunities to learn and improve on my game. I never thought that there would be anything in the Bible about sports, but there is. But there's nothing about football, softball, or baseball specifically, but the Bible teaches us about having a winning attitude. Today we'll learn more about that. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Welcome back, guys. Our scripture reading today came from a letter written by Paul. Do you know who Paul is? Paul used the illustration of a race to 
to explain how Christians are to live their lives. As runners in a race, we should never give up, but continually try to get closer and closer to God. Our prize is eternal life in heaven. Stories of the Bible, Paul. This is Saul. Saul was a Pharisee who hated the followers of Jesus so much that he would hunt them down to be brought to trial in Jerusalem. And he would even seek to murder them. Saul was uttering threats with every breath, and he was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He asked him to write a letter to the Jews in Damascus that would allow him to arrest any Christians he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. Now Saul went on his way. And as he came near Damascus, a light from heaven flashed around him, and he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul cried out, Who are you, Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus. Rise and go into the city, and you will be told what to do. So Saul got up and he opened his eyes, but he couldn't see anything. So the men who were with Saul led him into the city. After three days, a man named Ananias came to Saul. He put his hands on Saul and immediately Saul could see again. And with that, Saul became a follower of Jesus. He became the very thing he had tried to hunt and he immediately began telling people that Jesus is the Son of God, and he taught them about the mercy of God that he had received. And all who heard him were amazed. He then went by a new name, Paul, as he began preaching not just to the Jewish people, but to everyone. Despite many difficulties like being imprisoned, shipwrecked, and narrowly escaping death multiple times, Paul continued to preach about Jesus. Paul said that he would do everything he could to save people and help them know God. And that's just what he did in order to reach people who would otherwise be unreached. And many came to know Jesus because of what Paul said. Paul taught many in his day through his letters but even more have come to learn more about Jesus through the letters of Paul that can be read even to this day. Good morning. Today I'll be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27, NIV version. And it reads as thus. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to the body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Let's jump straight into our lesson. So who runs a race? Hmm. Why do people run races? Hmm. Some people run for fun. Others do it because they know that it is good for their bodies. At the end of a race, the person who crosses the finish line gets a prize. The Bible teaches us that we should live our lives as if we're going to get a prize at the end. You do this by being obedient, 
to God and staying as, and trying to stay as close to him as possible. Everyone who competes in sports goes into strict training. What kind of training can we do if we want to stay closer to God? We can take time to read our Bible, pray, go to church, and for now, go to virtual Sunday school. We do these things because we want to win the prize at the end of life. We want to, we want to please God if we love if we love God and accept Him as our Savior, and our prize will be living with Him forever. This is definitely something worth training for. Training can be hard. If you're already trained to play sports or in a race, you know it's not that easy. If you really, if you really want to win, you can't spend your time on your couch, eating snacks, and sleeping. You have to be disciplined. Trust me, I know. Sometimes it means getting up early or staying up late to work or whatever you're training for. You can't only do it when you feel like it. Not if you really want to be good. It's the same thing with growing closer to God. You have to put some effort into it. Even when you don't necessarily feel like it. Read, read your Bible or pray. That means that we should keep trying to get closer to God. No matter how many other things try and get in the way. Nothing is more important than living our lives for God. So let's keep running the race to get closer to God. exercising with us. Let's do it. First exercise, hip warm-up. Ten times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Next step, jumping jacks. Twenty times. Exercise, begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Next up, windmills. Twenty times. Ready? Begin. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. What's next? Okay, and if you can't do push-ups on your toes, you can do them on your knees. Ready? Begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Next up, knee high skipping 20 times. Ready? Begin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. <laughs> All right, thank you so much.
Who strengthens us? Christ. Who strengthens us? Christ. All right. Thank you for joining us. The safest place, hand wash often, don't leave a trace. Avoid your mouth, don't touch your face. Keep your distance, six feet space, and elbow cough. Save the human race when you do the quarantine shake. Save the human race when you do the quarantine shake. Save the human race when you do the quarantine shake. Save the human race when you do the quarantine shake. Shake, 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 shake. Shake, shake, the quarantine shake, 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 the quarantine shake. Tune in each week for another episode. We miss you all and would love to hear from you. Email us at ourfuture at BethelCollegeville.org or call the church office at 205-322-5360. Until next time, remember God loves you and this is Bethel where hope lives.